Good evening ladies and gentlemen, we've got a great race coming up here now. I'm Quinton Payne, I'm joined alongside this evening by Jared Randerade. Good evening to you sir. Good morning from me and hello to everyone. Uh, looking for a great race today I think. Exactly, we're come, we've moved on from Melbourne and we've shifted over to uh, the Shanghai International Circuit here in uh, China. Really high speed. So you'll be seeing uh, cars topping 200 miles an hour, 330 kilometers an hour for all those working metric. Look at that quick mass there, it's great. That was pretty good. <laughs> exactly, but we've, we're going to quickly soon head into the race in just a few moments. Yep, we will be heading into right now. So here we are, coming, the cars set off on their formation lap and the ACR driver Andre Borzowski takes, uh, lines up in first position followed by a brand new driver, Timu Cabrera in the spare car this time, looking to impress. Fedoris Theo is in uh, third position, looking to kickstart his championship once again. Sandeep Choda, reigning champion. Still, Adonis are lacking a livery in the second round, but hopefully we'll be seeing a nice bit of orange come round for Istanbul in two weeks' time. It looks like the second of the ACR cars, Lucas Viscots, hasn't actually gone out onto the p into onto the grid and we starting from the pit lane. Toda's teammate uh, Mano Clunt lines up in seventh place. Making his FS1 debut this year, Josh uh, Downward uh, lines up I with Hins Motorsport in seventh actually. Right behind him, Eric Stanford, the Brit, lines up 8th for EJ Engineering, followed by Mike Anderson in his T4 car. Poor qualifying performance by him, but he should be heading, looking to come through the field quite quickly. 10th is the second of the EJ cars, Wesley, Wesley Stefano. Stelios Francis in his UAR car. Then it's Vuk, Roslan, Mayer, Ragland, Baldassaro, Firu, as all the cars are doing their final burnouts onto the grid. Um, we might possibly be restarting, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, because a lot of drivers have just had a crash. Well, that will be interesting to see. Because obviously... Attention grid, we're all non-essential personnel, leave the grid now. So I take it we are restarting this. Could be interesting. It's fair enough. About because the rule is uh, thirty percent or more of the field. If they crash on the formation lap, even really they shouldn't. Um, 
then it's generally there's a line we're allowed one restart for everyone. So that's it. If everyone crashes now, that's it. Exactly. Um, bit of a shame for Thomas Hintz. He qualified pretty high, but um, he's had a problem with his internet, and it's just come on, and now he's going to miss the race. So, bit of a bit of a shame for him. Unfortunately, yeah, because he qualified up in fifth P5, which is absolutely incredible for him. He done a one forty four. 134.666, so it's really great qualifying. Yeah, he's not had some great luck this week, but hopefully he can take the positives from it. Exactly, of course, he would have got a plus five um, grid penalty for causing collision um, for Melbourne, but still, with pace in qualifying, it was going to be a pretty, it was likely to be a good race for him, but. Ah, well, obviously that'll be one of his uh, results that he'll drop at the end of the season as the championship allows drivers to drop two, the two of their worst results. Yeah, that's it. And a lot of a lot of people will be using that as a strategy thing, but hopefully for Thomas he doesn't have any problems in the future and he can just use this as one of the races he can drop. Exactly, it'll be great to see him come back in Istanbul in two weeks' time and, well, put in a great performance and qualifying in the race, hopefully. That's it. So, coming up to the start of the grid now again, we don't really need to run through the grid because we've done that. What are your expectations for the race there, Quinton? An awful lot of pit stops. <laughs> yeah, it's... I've spoken to a lot of drivers, their tyres aren't lasting as long as I'd like, so it will be an interesting one. Exactly, I was talking, you were talking to some drivers, I was talking to some drivers, and we're, bas we're all here in the same thing that soft tyres at the start are lasting four or five laps, which is, well, they're going off really quickly considering we've got 37 laps of racing here this evening. Yeah, exactly, it's going to be interesting to see who can conserve their tyres the most as other... I'm looking only the two in the top ten are starting on the soft tyres, and that is the new driver, Tomiu Cabrera, and EJ Engineering's Eric Stanford in eighth position. So again, they're coming down the, out of the final corner, a couple of burnouts, two or three probably to warm up those rear tyres, make them as sticky as possible to get the maximum launch. That's it. Do you want to call the lights then? Yeah. Let's get ready for the race. So we have four lights and five lights. And the lights go out and we're off. And it looks like it's a decent start from the front row. It looks like the, the new driver, Tommy Cubera, gets into lead, which is incredible. As they wind up coming through this really w tight windings first complex of corners as there's a UAR off in the background. We'll have a look who that is in a minute. Yeah, not a not a bad start from Tom Yu there. Miles in front already. He's already over half a second ahead of pole man Andre Borotovsky with Theodorus coming through the field as well. Sandeep's held, held station. He almost had a collision with Andre as well. Um, Josh Downard's up into 6th already from the start, Mena Klont into 5th. So it's quite an impressive start from that, uh, Josh Downard as well in the Hins car. He's, he's only started two, ever, two events in uh, FS3 and it's his debut in FS1 already. And, well, he's beating his teammate hands down already at the moment. Yeah, he's shown some great pace um, in the race and I'm just seeing... Wesley just had a bit of a blocking moment on Jack, but they didn't collide, so that's okay, down the back of the field. I am quite amazed, actually. Tomiu Cabrera has already got one and a half seconds over Andre Borotovsky in the lead. Uh, obviously, he's got the soft tyres, so he'll be looking to really, really make that first stint work for him. But obviously, the, the next five drivers are on the hard compound tyre, so... 
You'll have to be careful. Exactly, but opening up, he mustn't be punishing those tires too much because he's got to try and make that stint last as long as possible. Because, well, we've got 37 laps of racing and drivers, ex experienced drivers such as the reigning champion Choda, who was saying earlier, oh, as Kubert goes off. On the exit of turn two, lost it, loses it slightly through turn three, and runs into the gravel and moves down into third place. Yeah, that's it. Little mistakes like that will cost him, especially with the soft tyres. Now he's going to have to claw his way back up into the into the front, which means battling. And these tyres do not like that, especially at Shanghai with these tyres. It's now yeah, he's he's it just shows one little mistake, and the race is in jeopardy already. Um, just looking down the field, Mike Anderson's up to fifth already, so he's jumped five places from the start. Exactly, he was struggling with um, in qualifying pace. He was mentioning to me earlier that uh, he could only get into the high um, 134s. And if I look at it, the qualifying pace, he only could have managed a 135 actually in qualifying. So as he got stuck on the outside and lost two positions there down in and a bank to lose another one to move all the way down into 8th in one corner. Yeah, I've also seen some sad things at the back here. We've got Wesley Stefano, Sandy Choda and Jack Mayer already down 16th, 17th and 18th. So I'm guessing Sandeep's had an accident in the start and Wesley obviously got caught up in it as well. Uh, Jack Mayer is also in 18th and Adam Freitas didn't actually start the race peculiar but I'm sure he has his reasons. It's surprising to see Choda down there because well he's already made a pit stop so maybe there was an incident on the opening lap that we didn't quite catch but he's made a pit stop he's got those hard tyres on once again so yeah, while he's That's 30 it. seconds down on the um, leaders he'll be aiming to put in some really fast laps and close that gap to the front. Yeah, exactly, and back to the front now, we've got a three-way battle for the first uh, between Andre Borotovsky, Theodorus Ezeruglu, and Tommy Cabrera. Uh, should, it's going to get interesting now because obviously Tommy is on the soft tyres trying to make his way back. Uh, Theo is doing well to stick with Andre here, but hopefully they don't, these two don't get caught up in each other and lead Andre to just run away with it. As we come down the back straight, nice long kilometre straight, getting top speed up. See who can get the drag, uh, not the drag reduction system, that's not working this in this season, is it? Exactly, but they're going to be using the curves down here. There was a couple of there was um, a couple of drivers that suggesting that curves has almost become the replacement for DRS this season because they're not using it. They using it less on the acceleration and more to get that higher top speed. Yeah, exactly. I've also noticed Lucas Viscott's down into 8th position. I can't remember where he started, but back to the front, Andre Borotowski pulls out another 3 tenths up, and he's now almost almost a second clear of Theodore Cesarillo. Exactly, and he's got the harder tie on. He'll be aiming to just probably go for a 2 or 3 stop. We'll, see, we'll find out um, when... They make their first pit stops and we'll get a rough idea of the strategy they're going to be taking. And strategy is going to be playing a key role in this race, isn't it, Jared? It will, as speaking of which, Mark Turo and Stelios Vantis are in the pits. By the looks of it, it looks, dam it looks for damage because they've been in there for quite a few seconds now. pit stop at 12 seconds so that's definitely over 10 seconds worth of damage that's been repaired and of course it only takes um, 20 seconds for the entire car to be fixed so that was quite some sizable damage that clearly had been done on that previous lap that needed to needed him to come in yeah I'm um, just looking through the field now Tommy Cabre is making a run on Theodorus as a regular down the back straight Seems like Theo's got the quicker car, but look at Meta Klomp with his top speed, flying through them. Up into third now for uh, Adonis Engineering. It's going to get pretty tight into this next couple of laps. That was a brilliant move around the outside of that hairpin. You usually can't take um, anyone 
around the outside there. Yeah, exactly. I'm just looking. Menno Klotz got a much higher top speed than Theo and Tommy Yu. Andre's still just keeping that nice steady gap at front, 1.3 seconds. Um, there's also quite a decent battle for sixth place between Demir Vuk, Eric Stanford and Lucas Viscott and also Arif Roslin. Exactly. It's great to see so and, many cars involved in there. And Arif just hit Lucas Viscott, so I'm wondering if there's a bit of damage there because he's his steering wheel is leaning to one side slightly. Let's take a look at that on the replay. So you go it comes out into turn two and oh just a slight nudge on the rear tire of the ACR car. So he might have got away with a tiny amount of damage. Yeah, exactly. Let's have a look back at um, the battle for second between the top, the Theodorus, Menno and Tom Yu. They're getting pretty close into the fast sections of the track and we're going to have a decent drag race down the back straight here. Watch for Menno Klont's top speed, he's very, very fast. Getting the move done even before the top speed comes into it, so he's obviously got quicker acceleration and quicker top speed, but Theo just gets that... Um, I forgot what it's called now. Slipstream. Yeah, and he takes the inside looking to defend it, but it looks like Menno has got has been able to hang it around and into the final corner, takes the inside, but on the out coming out on the exit, loses it slightly on the curb and allows Theo to get past once again. This is getting very tight. Oh that was a risky move there by Tommy Yu, but they got through, okay. Uh, Andre is pulling out a decent gap now, 2.6 seconds ahead. Exactly, these guys are just, they're battling and they're messing about, they need to get knuckle down, they've got another 32 laps in uh, this race, so if they just knuckle down and focus in on catching the ARC car, then who knows, they might be on for a win, but the more they battle now on the heavier fuel is going to punish them even later in the race. Yeah, that's it. So we've got the battle for 2nd, 3rd and 4th, but we've also got a decent battle for 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. Looks like so Theo just went a little bit wide out of the high speed S's and the hairpin there and has lost both positions to Klon and Kaber. So down to 4th uh, place now for the Greek driver, but he'll be in the slipstream of hoping and he's already out of the slipstream, we're coming down the kilometre long back straight. And he's passed. Yeah, he gets, so. that, gets that move done nicely. Exactly. It'll be interesting to see if Kuber actually comes into the pits this time, because it's on prediction that the soft tyres will last five laps, so. And he doesn't pit, so he's going on for a sixth lap. It'll be interesting to see if he can hold him on for the entirety of this lap. Uh, there's some bad news here for Tayfor Motorsport with Mike Anderson retiring the car on his own accord by the looks of that he's just reversed it into the garage. Wow. Did you spot any incidents on the previous lap on the replay or something? No, he just he just pitted and stopped and reversed the car into the pits. That'll be interesting for the T T four uh T four management to deal with. Yeah indeed. Um just now looking obviously there's the battle for fourth and third, but this battle for fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth is getting pretty pretty tight. Exactly, and Damien Fuchs got past his teammate um, somewhere around in the past couple of laps and is leading this um, train of cars now. It's almost five cars, this train, with uh, Eric Stanford in the background closing in on the Italian car. So it's going to be interesting to see, if, to see if Fuchs can hold off the drivers as everyone behind him is going to get a really good slipstream as Viscos pulls out from that uh, said slipstream 
But is he able to pass? Not quite. Hasn't got the late breaking sorted. But he can take him on the inside. Yeah, this is going to get very tight. A very tough place to overtake. He runs just out onto the grass there. Uh, he compromises his entry into this corner and now Demir's got that lead again. He's going to have to watch the inside line because I would take a stab if Lucas has got the speed. He's going to go on the inside. But look at look at the Italia car. Arif Roslan up into 7th place on Josh Downard now. Exactly, it's great to see him go in two wide through the first complex of corners, turn one, two, and three. Uh, switching back constantly is amazing to see. It's great uh, instinctive driving. Is oof, looked like the Hidden's uh, driver suddenly break out breaks himself into the hairpin at turn six. Yeah, exactly. We've got a battle for the EJ Engineering cars, 12th and uh, 11th and 12th, with Sandy just trying to get through as well. So that's 11th, 12th, and 13th down the back there. So it's good, good to see battles throughout the entire field here. Strange. What happened to Eric Stanford? Because a moment, well, half a minute, half a lap ago, he was right on the back of the train from fifth place down to ninth, and well, he's now down in 11th, so... Uh, I believe he's pitted for hard tyres, so he's pitted from 7th place to fit the hard tyres on, and now he's in 11th place. Ah, so that's going to be an absolute pain for Sanip Choda, who's obviously on slightly older tyres, and they've got the same grip level, but they're sl well, they're going to be 8 laps older now, so... And being stuck behind a driver is going to be a massive deal for him. Yeah, exactly. I'm just watching that battle actually uh, between Sandeep and Wesley, and Wesley's got a much much faster top speed than Sandeep. Um, but Sandeep's got the ability to outbreak him, so I'm guessing Sandeep's running a bit higher downforce. Potentially, yeah. Is it doesn't look like Sandeep's going to be a actually able to pass him anytime soon. He's able to part get close in the braking areas, but the Shanghai circuit here is broken up by all these main sh or the straights. So uh, Stefano is able to pull away from all those uh, complex of corners. So be interesting to see if Choda can prove us wrong. It looked like he's about to do so on the exit, but just couldn't quite do it. As he looks, yeah, he's got that on the inside, but he's outbraked himself, and Wesley's going to go straight back through on the inside. Exactly, it was quite a, it was quite a rare mistake for uh, Cho just to be outbreaking himself. It's clearly, he's getting quite agitated now. He's trying around the outside and going to throw it up the inside and. Stefano wisely gets pulls out of the way. Doesn't want to get a damaged car this early on in the race. Yeah, I, th I think sandwich has been watching too much of the Formula One race here a couple of weeks ago. That was an almost identical move uh, as what Lewis Hamilton did on Valtteri Bottas, I think. Um, just looking down, Michael Balassara uh, for Team Dushland also pitted. He, but he pitted pretty early and is now on the hard tyres again. And he started on the hard tyres, so... Maybe the hard tyres aren't lasting as long as some drivers also predicted. Well, true. Um, I saw a document earlier from, well, you produced, you sent it to me, and I noticed on it that the hard, all the tyres were really poor in the first cup opening stints, and throughout the race they gradually got a lot, could almost double their lifetime. Uh, lifespan so that was quite interesting to see so I think it was a three stop um, starting on the softs that could only last five laps in the opening stint and then the final one final stint the soft tires could last almost ten laps so it's always doubling throughout as these cars get lighter yeah exactly and that and that's interesting to point out because um, Eric Stanford opted for that strategy at the start. He was going to do that uh, originally when I was talking to him, but he's obviously changed his strategy now and realised that the hard tyres are probably the better choice to go with. 
exactly. The uh, harder tyre has a slightly more durable nature to it. Oh, well, obviously more durable, but in terms of it can deal with higher temperatures and still provide a little bit more um, overall grip, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, just want to keep an eye out for the battle for sixth between Demir, Arif and Josh Downard, as Tommy Cabrera has pitted from uh, what he was in fourth place at first. He pitted from soft tyres and he's in the pits for quite some time actually. And he's gone back onto the soft tyres. So that's an interesting strategy he's going to be taking. But he got those tyres to, uh, to lap 10, so that's very well done from the newcomer. Exactly, at this rate, he might be going for potentially a two stop, um, another stint on these, and then switching to the hard tyres at the end. Or he might be going for a three stop. Be interesting to see if he can keep up the pace for it. We'll have to keep an eye on him over this next in and see what his lap times are like. Yeah, um, just looking now, Demir Vuk and Arif Roslan and Josh Down are getting pretty close. Josh is out breaking Arif, but so it's getting pretty, pretty tight in the braking zones. Um, yeah, they they seem to be struggling a bit with grip. Exactly. Is it we've got a hidden sandwich going on for uh, Roslan, but. As he gets a good X out of turn 13, the long unwinding corner, and he'll be looking to get past on the inside into the hairpin, and is he able to do it? Yep, he covers off the inside and the apex, but sacrifices a little bit on the exit, allowing um, Book to cut, get past again, but covers the inside and they're still going too wide on the main straight. It's quite good. Look at Josh here. Downard out on the out. Oh no, sorry, that was that's just my live timing bugging up. It showed it showed me Josh Downard actually overtook both of them. So don't don't listen to that, guys. That was just my my bugginess. Yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> but it looks like Rosalind has been able to uh, overtake one of the Hins cars that was ahead of him. So and now he's able to drop them pretty sharpish. So. The Hins cars are going to be looking, needing to be working together now, so... Yeah, we had Josh Downard just um, pass his teammate there. I've just... Oh, see, my live timing's really bugging up again. It's just told me three drivers DNF'd, but they haven't. Okay, it's fixed now. All right. Be interested to see because the top six currently haven't pitted, and the top six is uh, Borowski, Klont, Viscos, Rosland, Donard, and Vuk, the two Hinses at the back there, and they're yet to pit, and they have quite a sizable gap to the next person in uh, seventh place, which is Theo in his UAR car. So, and he is well 30 seconds back from the lead. So, it'll be interested to see how long these guys go. Yeah, exactly. And just looking back now, Sandeep's now into the points. He's in tenth place. He's in a bit of a sandwich with the EJ Engineering cars. It's not really close, but he's in a sandwich similar to what the Arif Rosland for Scuderia Italia was with the Hints Motorsport, and also similar for his teammate uh, against the ACI drivers, which are having a good outing in first and third here. Exactly. It's interesting to see that um, after the first race in Melbourne two weeks ago is who's this pitting that was Choda ah that's interesting to see actually because he pitted obviously at the end of lap one because of some damage and well the leaders haven't been into the pitch yet so perhaps the damage he's got He's causing a little bit more wear than we expect, than he's expecting on the tyres, and he's now going to be going around driving and trying to work out the best, trying to engineer the best strategy for himself now. That's it. I think the top three have got a nice, or the top two have got a nice gap over the field. Uh, Lucas Viscott in third place is 17 seconds behind his teammate in first. 
Um, Josh Downard is now up into fourth, passing Arif Roslan uh, in the in sector two. I didn't quite catch it, but they're battling now down the back straight, and looks like Arif's got the slipstream and he's on the outside. He breaks earlier. Oh, it's going to get tight. And Demir Book runs wide at the back there. Yeah, that was good uh, defending from. Um, Josh Downard actually, as he runs, that comes out of the final corner, gets onto that curb. It's a really difficult curb that because you run too far over and you're just going to be gliding along the curb with no wheels on the ground. So, unfortunately, the position that he gained on that last lap, he's just sacrificed once again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Demir Vuk is now in the pits. I believe he's pitted for the hard tyres and he's also in for damage by the looks of it. He comes out of the pit lane, 16 seconds he spent in that pit lane, so a long, very long pit stop, so as you see, rightly suggested, Jared, it looks like he probably did have some damage, so he's rejoined back down in 11th position, I believe, sorry, 9th position, so be interesting to see where he comes, if he wants all the orders sort themselves out leaders have pitted where he's able to see he's going to be able to possibly execute the undercut let's not forget here if the two drivers he was fighting with before Rosalind and Downard are both are both got damage on their cars as well so the undercut is still a possibility speaking of an undercut Menno Klont is, has just entered the pits for Adonis Engineering he's going to be trying to get that boost that you're talking about on uh, the ACR driver, Andre Baratowski. Exactly, and that was a slick pit stop, three and a half seconds, smooth as you like. And we've also got Arif Roslan and Josh Downard in the pits, so this is going to get pretty tight. And we'll... Will they maintain the positions? Yes, they will. Just coming out of pit lane. Looks like Arif Roslin got slightly uh, quicker pit stop by his Italia, Scuderia Italia crew. So they're rejoining now in 6th and 7th position. So they've, won, they've lost a couple of places in the pit lane, but they've got nice fresh tyres on. Roslin's gone to the soft tyres switching from the hard tyres, so it's an interesting to see him go on to the soft tyres in the middle of the race. Yeah, exactly. Wesley Stefano also pitted a little while ago. He also put the soft tyres on um, for the EJ engineering car. It's... Did he start on soft tyres? No, he started on the mediums. Andre Borotowski is now entering the pits. Be what would you what do you reckon? Mediums or softs? Probably go for the ooh, ooh, mediums and then go for another pit stop at right at the end for the softs. We'll find out now. Car goes up. <laughs> if he comes out of pit lane, does he maintain the position? Yes he does. Still in Slightly behind, a few seconds behind his teammate, but his teammate's not going to be holding him up, and he's maintained the position to Menno Klont, so it's a good pit stop and a good in lap for him, and now he's got fresh boots on, he can start pushing once again. Yeah, exactly. Um, my live timing is bugging up again for some reason. Um, so I don't know where anyone is at the moment, whether it's the correct position or not. But I am I right to say that Tommy Cabrera is back into fifth place now? Um, yeah, he's only ten seconds down on the leader now, so that's pretty impressive, actually. Yeah, and Eric Stanford's pit st early pit stop has also helped him to get back into the points. He's now in eighth uh, behind Josh Downard. 
Exactly, and being and we'll now see or well, just talking about going back to uh Borovsky's um pit stop just there. It was interesting to see that he was able to run fifteen laps on those which if he does another fifteen laps as he's just been allowed past by his teammate. Um so Borovsky, if he can do another fifteen laps, he'll then have uh seven laps left over which he can quite easily get the soft tires on and do a really quick blast right at the end so it's looking like it's going to be another two stop strategy for the ACR guys this time out yeah it'd be interesting to see if it works and unfortunately for Menno he's going to have to try and sort of sit back and see what strategies he can pull off towards the end of the race because yeah he's now four seconds or oh, he's actually catching but uh, that would have been because Andre and Lucas had their little passing moments. Hopefully for Menno, Lucas doesn't hold him up too long. Exactly, but looking down the grid, there's not there really are a few close battles. Um, let's go down to 13th, where oh Michael Baldessari is <laughs> coming into the pit lane. It's just as we thought there was going to be a battle, someone comes into the pit lane. That's just our luck. That battle was going to be with Wesley Stefano had uh, Borzaro not needed some fresh uh, rubber, so we've robbed of another battle, but hey ho. That's it. Is he he's come back out onto hard tyres? Uh, just just next to Mark Turo there. Um, Sorry yep. if anyone can hear in the background. I've got I've got dogs barking. <laughs> um, just as uh, I was flicking through the cameras and I just saw Damien Vuk going for a spin in those high speed S's. So well, <laughs> that was quite costly in terms of lap time. His set, second set is going to be really uh, low now. So we'll see what kind of how much how many seconds he lost. He lost over ten seconds in the second sector with that spin so he's lost a couple of positions and he'll be looking to get those back pretty sharpish yeah exactly uh, Eric Stanford's into the pits for EJ Engineering uh, for making his second pit stop mm, it's not even to half distance yet and making their second pit stop it's going to be an interesting to see what they do Stanford obviously started on the softer tyres at the soft tyres at the beginning of the race, didn't he? So he's slight. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We both had a heart and mouth moment there, as he almost has his front wing wing taken off as his teammate comes flying through into the f cutting cross him into the first corner. That was very close from the two drivers. Exactly, and how long ago did Wesley Stefano actually pit? Do you know? Uh, he pitted just after Sandeep, but that doesn't help because Sandeep's pitted. True, I'm just thinking that maybe there's going to be a couple of team orders coming into play here because obviously Eric Stanford is going to be having a lot fresher rubber and could potentially be challenging Damia Vuk, who's right up ahead of Stefano. Obviously, though, Stefano has uh, got the grippier tyre, so uh, there's <laughs> such a difficult judgement call for these drivers to be making. S Stanford gets into the slipstream and gets past his teammate on that back straight. Yeah, that's that's pretty wise from Wesley there. He's obviously got a much... Much older tyres there. Eric's probably got the better tyres to be able to catch Demir. Exactly, as we go up to the battle for P6, is Viscos and Josh Darren in his Hins car on his debut, making quite an uh, impressive debut. He tried to go down the inside um, at the first hairpin turn five or six uh couldn't quite pull it off 
and slots in behind Viscos in the ACR car once again, but he's getting a hit move on this in this race, so that's an impressive debut from him. Yeah, exactly. I saw his lap times earlier, obviously, as part of the the entry requirements. They have to do some laps under the uh, admin supervision, and he did have some pretty good lap times and was pretty consistent as well. So it's good to see him up there for his first race, as you said. Um, obviously, the new drivers are really surprising me today. Uh, Tommy Cabrera up in the fourth, who's just actually entered the pit lane, and Arif Roslan as well. Uh, in fifth, who's now going to take that fourth position from him? Is that all the FS1 um, deputies this race? There's three or four of them actually, so it's quite impressive what they're doing. They're all running in the top ten, I believe. You said Roslin, Kabir, and Josh uh, Downard, so really impressive. Yeah, exactly. This this battle for 10th, 11th, and 12th is still not subsiding. Uh, Wesley's getting a run on Eric, but Eric's also getting a run from Demir Vuk, so it's going to be pretty tight once they start bunching together as Eric goes around looking for the shorter way around through the, the first complex as he's going to have the run. If he gets the exit right, he's going to have the run. He's going to try an inside maneuver. Let's see if Demir blocks it off. It's got an outbreak. That's very tight from the drivers, but good thing they didn't make contact. As Wesley Stefano is going to go and try and get the run on his teammate here. Exactly, but these high-speed S's at turn um, six and seven is so difficult to actually get close behind a giant another car there. So to actually get past there would be well, it would be an incredible move. So obviously not many drivers are able to hold it right up the gearbox behind the gearbox of the car ahead so Stefano's being wise holding it back a little bit he's got the softer option uh, tyre so he's going to be suffering um, wear on those tyres pretty sharpish but Eric Stanford is in that slipstream of the Hins car ahead and he's moved to the inside hits the apex on the hairpin and gets a half decent exit but the Hins car is able to pull back ahead. That was that was good driving by the two of them. It looked like there was a few touches from my screen but hopefully nothing major. Um, just looking at the front, Menno Klontz dropping back from Andre Borotowski so it looks like Borotowski's got the upper hand there as Theo is back into third over Lucas Viscott. True, it might, it might be looking, um, it's looking like Viscott is running a couple of laps longer than his teammate Borowski, so probably going on the same strategy, but just potentially seeing if he can, is going to be a, seeing if he can use those softer tyres at the end a, l a lot better than what his teammate could be able to use them for. Yeah, exactly. As I've just noticed, Sandeep Chodas is now up into 8th, uh, which he has been for a while, we just haven't mentioned it. Um, he's doing back to climb back through the, through the standings as he has pitted an extra pit stop over some of these drivers. Obviously, you know one person who will be a little bit pleased with Choda being that far down in the field. Obviously, he's going to get four points if he finishes in eighth, but Sam Howe, unfortunately, can't race th this weekend um, in his Tay 4 car, so he's missing this race. And Choda and Howe, we had that massive championship battle last year. The two of them just constantly at the front of every race finishing within five seconds of each other every for over 18 rounds almost so uh, Sam will be slightly happy I think he'll be a little bit glad yeah he will be um just yeah looking Lucas Viscott's pulling in some very fast sectors now and so is 
uh, Tomiu Cumbrea. They're both doing very, very quick lap times. Obviously, that must be down to the new tyres that they've got on. They've only, they're only a few laps old, aren't they? Viscos pitted a few laps back, and obviously, Kabir pitted, well, He's done his second pit stop now and he's switched on to the harder tyre because he ran soft soft. So going for a hard time, maybe he's going to be able to get um, 17, 15, another seven, well, 17 laps out of those tyres. Yeah, um, that's it. He might, he might go to the end if he can hold that as Lucas Viscott has done another fastest lap of the race. Um, there's a battle down the back of the field in 14th and 15th between Celios and Jack. They're quite close. Jack has a lot better under braking and Celios runs wide. But that's okay. As I think, is that is that Andre coming up behind them? So they're going to be. This is going to be interesting now. See who takes advantage of the blue flags. Exactly, and you mentioned that's a battle for P14. It's actually going to become a battle for P13. Is Michael Baldessaro is going to be the one punching the hole in the air for the slipstream but for the cars behind. This is, it looks like Stereos fans just can't quite catch up to Baldessaro on that back straight. A little bit touch and go with the, the UNC car behind him but they get away with it. I can tell you this though, Andre is going to be a bit nervous trying to pass these guys as they're still battling for position. And he obviously wants to get through quickly so he doesn't lose time to Manaclont and he's going to go up on the inside and the drivers get out of the way nicely there. Interesting to see that the UNC car with uh, Jack Mayer in there, he get managed to take advantage so he's got a little bit of, well, one second gap now roughly so he took very big advantage with Borowski coming through there. That was a yeah, very opportunistic move. I had a feeling someone was going to try and take advantage of it, and oh no, Michael Battlestar has moved over and he's put himself in threat for Jack Mayer, and Jack May takes the inside line into the fast S, into the fast left-hander and into the fast right-hander, so he's got in front of both Delios and Michael Battlestar due to the blue flags. Exactly, that is intelligent driving for you right there. Sticking it, right, just following the person who's triggering all those blue flags for them just following hit them through and there we go we'll see him it'll be it might get a slipstream on this back straight to be able to defend from Bolasaro so Jack Matt is he's a little he's very uh, strategic in his um, driving yeah I've just seen unfortunately for Edge Engineering Eric Stanford's just had a spin coming out of the last corner he's run it wide onto the grass and he's lost control of it and he's lost his front wing he's gonna, and that's on the straight so he's got an entire lap of no front wing to try and bring it back to the pits ouch that is his race pretty ruined I'd say be interested to see if he goes soft or hard though now 13 laps to go if he's able to uh, look after the soft tyres he might be able to do it I'm not sure yeah, well, we'll see. Hopefully he doesn't pull over. Um, he looks like he's going to try and bring it back. So, yeah, we'll see how he goes. I'm not too sure whether he will do soft tyres. He might just do the hard tyres and just try to get what he can out of it. Exactly. I know um, i done a little bit of practice earlier this week and a little late lap uh, stint with quite light fuel on board for those eight laps and the tires were at, the soft tires were in pretty good shape after those eight laps of racing so potentially I was working it out roughly those soft tires now could actually go 14 15 laps if you look after them at the end of the stint so we'll see as he comes in Eric Stanford comes into the pit lane hits the speed limiter this is going to be quite interesting because by the end of the race, Wesley and Eric are going to be pretty close again, so there's going to be another team battle. 
improving eventually. Obviously, Eric's got the damage to repair, so he'll be a couple of more seconds. So that was a 13 second pit stop comes out. He's on the harder tyre again, so he's got 12 laps of, well, absolutely punishing those tyres, using up all the grip they can give him for those uh, final few laps. As he's down in 15th now, he'll be looking to use that, all that, all the new tyres just to get up to into a point scoring position for his team. Yeah, exactly. We've also just seen Theodorus uh, fly past Arif, and Arif is actually going into the pits. So he's pitting now on lap 24 from the soft tyres. So we'll see. What do you reckon? Soft tyres to the end? I'm pretty sure he might be able to make it to the end. Potentially, we'll find out as he slots into his pit box. And, yep, another set of the soft tyres. Three and a half second pit stop. Nice and smooth. Very nice. 12 laps on those soft tyres. I reckon he'll be able to pull that off. I've probably got to just cursed it now. Commentators curse and whatnot, but <laughs> hey ho. Yeah, oh well, we'll we'll see what happens. As um, looking at the front, Andre Borotowski is very far in front now. He's 12 seconds over Meno Klont. Uh, another driver we haven't really mentioned is Josh Downard with a battle now with Theodorus uh, for fourth place. Uh, Theo pitted a lot earlier than Josh, so this is going to be a pretty pretty easy pass for Theo, I would say. Um, I wouldn't expect Josh to be staying out for very long. He might even pit this lap now, seeing as he's going to get passed on the inside by Theo. Exactly, they've been running side by side as Phil well, gets past them. Running side by side, coming out of that really um, long corner at turn 13. So, but unfortunately, the hinge driver can't quite hold on to that position, loses it to uh, Theo. Yeah, Menno Klont has pitted, I think. You would be right. He's come out still in third place, so and back onto the harder tyres. Well, um, mm, interesting to see that he's gone onto the hard tyres. I would have thought more drivers would be choosing the soft tyres at this point, like uh, Roslyn Dunn in his Italia car. So, well, he can push quite hard now for the 11 remaining 11 laps, as he's only six seconds back from Viscos now and. Be interested to see if he can uh, push these tyres and close the gap and potentially do the undercut on Borowski. Because obviously Borowski might be going for a couple more laps so he can get a really good run with the soft tyres. Um, a good seven or eight laps at the end. So, Melancon might still be on here for a shock win. Yeah, exactly. And I'm guessing it was a team strategy because Sandeep Choda as we were talking, also pitted uh, on his 26th lap for the hard tyres again. He's now down into ninth. I'm just looking and it looks like the um the two hinge drivers, they're both needing to make another pit stop at the end. And looking here down at Kenneth Ragland, there's a battle brewing for a 12th position with Ragland and the EJ of Eric Stanford. So uh, Stanford's catching up pretty quickly to him. And it'll be interesting to see, what Stan see when Stanford sizes him up and goes for a pass. Yeah, I'm not too sure how long ago it happened, but unfortunately we've had our second retirement for the race. Uh, actually, quite a while ago, if I'm looking at that right. Paulo, uh, Paulo MFR has retired due to an accident. Yeah, unfortunately, I think he was um, 
near the back of the field for a lot of the race. We haven't seen him, a lot of him uh, this race, so it's unfortunate for him, but I'm sure in Istanbul we'll, he can hit back and hey ho. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna gonna be interesting how this top uh, top three finish and in what order because I think Lucas will have to pit again, um, and he's five seconds ahead of Menno. Just looking now, to see how quick Menno's catching in. Well, he's What's sent the fastest lap time, so <laughs> that is pretty fast. You're correct. However, he didn't gain any time on Andre Borotowski there. Mm, interesting. So perhaps Borotowski's, well, only lapping, is able to keep those tyres going for quite a long time. So maybe, who knows, he might be going until the end of the race. That would be incredible if he can pull off a one-stop at Shanghai. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking down the field again. Uh, the battle for 11th now. Jack Mayer, Kenneth Raglan, and Eric Stanford uh, getting pretty close. Well, Kenneth and Jack are getting very close on the exit there. Oh no, they're not going to go two, three wide. Oh no, they don't. It's only two wide into that apex. And it looked like Kenneth Ragland gets past Jack Mayer in, and is able to hold on into the final corner. So Kenneth Ragland's into 11th. He's 14 seconds down on the points paying position, but if he can push more, push now, he might be able to get there. You know who's setting fastest sectors right now? Sandeep Chota. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Just I'll be it down in down in eighth, but still setting fastest lap times, uh, well, fastest sectors so far. He wasn't so fast in that second sector, but he's definitely got pace in there. It's just a shame he wasn't able to show up the front today. Exactly, and why wouldn't you go set the fastest lap at the... Oh, is it looks like... There's a spin for Eric Stanford in a 12th place. It's very, very strange that. Let's have yeah, I think. On board. Oh, he's okay. just clipped the curb, yeah. Oh, he was very close to hitting Jack there. And it's a very good recovery as well. 360 and just continues out in second gear, so. Impressive. Well, the spin isn't impressive, but the recovery, that's impressive. And, funny enough, our debuts, debutants today are running in sequence, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Tom Yu Cabrera is in 5th, Arif Roslan is in 6th, and Josh Downard is in 7th. I really hope they're all on the same tyres as well. Just to... <laughs> Ah, uh, Rosalind uh, proves to be the exception of that running to the uh, soft compound, but that's an impressive uh, debut for all of them, actually, to come up, well, 5th, 6th and 7th against quite an experienced bunch here. They've got the reigning champion right behind them, Sadiq Choda. Damien Vuk, he's raced how many seasons of FS1? We're talking at least, hey. well... Three. At least four or five, I think. Yeah, exactly. So they're beating some pretty experienced guys out there, and that's really impressive for to see new blood coming into FS1. And Eric was able to pass Jack Mayer again on under blue flags uh, with Andre Borotowski, similar to what Jack actually did a little bit earlier on some other drivers. So. Good driving. Um, he was able to obviously pull it back from the spin, so he's back into 12th now. He's got a couple of seconds to catch Kenneth Ragland, but if he stays behind Andre Borotowski somewhat, he'll benefit from that. Actually, just looking, Andre's pitted 
recently. He's on the soft tyres. Uh, exactly. He must have pit. I think he pitted the uh, earlier, earlier this lap. So this is his lang out lap now. So be interesting. Good prediction, I think. <laughs> Eight laps on those tyres. That's quite easily possible. If Rosalind can do it on, uh, can push them for twelve laps. Borowski's going to be able to do you eight laps on him easily. Yeah, exactly. As we just had uh, the fastest lap set by Andre Borowski, as you would expect, a 136.785, which is very, very fast. Um, but only a one tenth quicker than Mena Klont's fastest, ta fastest time. So interesting to see, actually, because Mena Klont's on the hard tyres. That's a good point, but obviously um, Borowski must have only just come out of pit lane or something, so he might be able to find an extra few couple of tenths in that first sector. Who knows? We'll find out later as he starts maybe setting purple sectors. He hasn't set a f purple sector in the first purple time in the first sector, so he might have just wanted that fastest lap and say that's it, I'm done now. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I'm I'm looking at this. And I'm gonna s hopefully not commentate curse, but I'm pretty sure Andre is gonna run away with this now. Eight seconds ahead of his teammate, uh, with Menaclon trying to pull in Lucas Viscott, who hasn't pitted, if I'm correct, yet. True. He's coming through the hairpin now, heading towards the pit lane and final corner. So it'll be interesting to see. Does he come into pit? He does not. So he goes on to the 32nd lap. Only five laps to go here in Shanghai. And be, is he going to attempt a one stop? That would be incredible. If he does, my, my hat will be off for him. That, that would be a brilliant drive in Shanghai for a one stop. That would be unbelievable. Obviously, it would be a bit annoying for Menno Klont. Uh, but obviously, they've been working hard. In the strategy, so hopefully it pays off for him. We'll see. Uh, still five laps to go. Exactly. I'm just thinking the tires get an absolute real punishment here. The the a lot of the corners are really high speed. So just some of the key ones. First turn, obviously winding down from well almost top speed all the way down into first or second gear. Um, for turn two, and then obviously coming out onto the back straight, you've got that really long un unwinding corner, we'll call it, and where uh, Viscos coming through now, and take too much speed, and you're going to run wide, and obviously lose a lot of time. But take too little speed coming out there, and you're obviously not going to get enough top speed at the end of the straight. So. This is, it, this is impressive if he's trying to pull it off. As we'll see if he I, th does. I think he's going. Sorry, I think he's going to be able to because he's holding stations on Mena Klont. He's not lost time. He's not gained time. And as we expected, Andre Borotovsky has set the fastest lap of the race yet again, a full, a full second quicker. Actually, no, only a, only half a second quicker than his teammate around sure. that lap. Yeah, one thirty six five five nine. So. A little bit faster, half a second faster than his teammate, three tenths of a second um, faster than Menno Klont, who hold, held that fastest lap for a couple of laps. But winding down now, four laps for Borowski to take his first win in FS1. Obviously, he joined the series over the winter period and had a fifth place in Melbourne after a poor strategic decision to run the hard tyre constantly, so he's hit back here in Shanghai and that is impressive. Yeah, exactly. They knew they made a, made a mistake with the strategy in Melbourne. They've come back and definitely improved a lot over the, the last two weeks. I'm just looking now. Our rookie battle is starting to brew 5th, 6th and 7th. Josh is a little bit back, far back, but 
Tommy Cabru and Arif Roslan are right up with each other now. Exactly. It's going to be great to see who uh, is able to claim the top rookie here in Shanghai. Obviously, Timu Kaber he's had very little. Um, um, what's the word? Experience in these cars. He's literally jumped in them pretty much today. And he's only just clocked over a hundred laps so far. So. So it looks like Rosalind's been able to get the run down the back straight into the fight, into the hairpin. Goes a little bit deep, but is able to keep get on the power for the exit and take the position. So Arif Rosalind moves into P5 and effectively the top rookie position at the moment. Yeah, exactly. And while this is going on, Josh Downard's slowly catching them up. I've also just noticed that. Uh, Tommy Yu is actually struggling a little bit for the rear tyres. Uh, he keeps losing a bit of traction. So obviously the rookies are still coming to grips with the cars. Um, but yeah, so far it's looking like Arif is going to be the one on top. Hopefully I haven't commentated cursed him for the last three laps because that would really be unfair. <laughs> well, you always have because he looked like he'd gone a little bit deep into the head pin at uh, turn five. So... But he's able to uh, keep ahead just slightly of Kaber, so you haven't quite commentated cursed him yet. Always the yet. <laughs> well, there's two laps to go, and anything can happen. Exactly. Although, one thing I can say is it looks like Andre Borotovsky is going to take his first win of the season and the first win for ACR. Uh, Lucas Viscott still in second place, but Menno Klont has pulled two seconds out of him in the last two laps. So whether he can make that up in the next couple of laps, I'm not sure. Surely Lucas Viscott will be struggling for tyres now. Exactly. I was I was just watching the uh, rookie battle con continuing, and coming out onto the back straight, uh, Roslin lost, went took a little bit too much speed on the exit, and of basically went over the uh, exit curb quite violently and almost lost the position. He was able to get back on track just ahead of uh, Kaber and with his top speed Rosalind was able to keep ahead but that was, an un that was a nerving moment for him. Yeah exactly and looking at that now Josh Downer has able to, been able to pull in uh, Tommy Yu, and it's going to be a close battle. Unfortunately, Tommy Yu's on the harder compound, as that was very close. Tommy Yu almost shut the door on Josh there, but Josh just slowed down enough. Um, I'm glad that this has sort of happened with the rookies. Obviously, it's a great way to start, build your confidence up, battling well for the first race. They've done pretty well. I've, I'm pretty happy. Exactly. I'm just looking. Um for the battle for P2 and it's getting pretty close, Menno Klontz uh, under a second, only well there's only six tenths of a second between them now so going into this final lap it's going to be epic to see if Menno Klontz could take that second position we saw this back in um, the battle for P2 back in Melbourne and it's just repeating itself here again as Manu Klont gets an excellent run out of turn 3 and looks to the inside but not quite far enough along for the hairpin. Yeah, it's going to be very close here. And Manu Klont's obviously on much younger tyres. Uh, but still, hats off to Lucas Viscott there for pulling off a very... Oh wow, what a move by Manu Klont on the inside. Going into the fast, fast left-hander. Exactly. It looked like Viscos slightly had to sacrifice the line because his tyres are obviously very old now and they're going to be lacking a lot of grip. So he moves down into P3, but to do Shanghai on a one stop, that's pretty good. Exactly. As we look to our leader, Andre Borotovsky here, he's almost up to the last corner now. Brilliant race for him. No no problems whatsoever. Fastest lap so far. And he's going to take 
first win of the season for ACR and himself as an FS1 driver. Great race for him. And we look back now, Mena Klont's going to claim that second place on the last lap. He'll be pretty happy with that. Lucas Viscott making it a 1-3 for ACR. Theodorus is likely to get fourth position here, coming out into the last corner, and looking down at the battle for the rookies, Josh Down and Arif Rosland are still going at it. Coming into the hairpin now. This is the battle for fifth place. Josh Downer looks to the inside. Arif Rosland just shuts it off. It's going to be very close. Sandeep Chod is actually right behind him as well. He takes seventh place over Tommy Cabrou. Looks like Josh is going to try to get the run on him. No, Arif Roslan finishes in fifth place, the highest rookie for the day. Josh Downard finishes in sixth. Sandy Choda crawls his way back into seventh. Tommy Ukabru finishes his rookie race in eighth position. Next to, well, we have got 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th, and 15th confirmed. We'll run through that in a second. Wesley Stefano and Demir Vuka are also going at it to the last lap. Demir is a little bit too far behind. Wesley Stefano coming into the last corner. He's going to take ninth place, and Demir is going to take the final points position to make it a pretty good outing for Hints Motorsport, and Wesley obviously taking that uh, second point scoring place for EJ Engineering. Our lower half of the field, Kenneth Ragland finishes in 11th. Eric Stanford comes around in P12. Michael Balasara finishes for Team Dushland in 13th. Jack Mayer finishes second race for Team UNC in 14th. And Stelio Spansis, not having the best of races, finishes in 15th for UAR. Mark Turo finishes in 16th. Uh, has actually run out of fuel on his last lap, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but he's still classified, obviously, 16th, because 16th position. Uh, Paula MFR, we had the accident on lap 22, he DNF'd, as did Mike Anderson, he retired on lap 5 very early on. And Adam Freitas never got into the grid. So that is Shanghai, uh, over and completed. Andre Borotowski taking the win, Menno Klont taking 2nd place, Lucas Viscott finishing in 3rd position. So, to sum it up today, pretty good team battles all around. Andre Borotowski finishes there in first, Mena Klont in second, Lucas Viscott in third, Theodora Cesariglou in fourth, Arif Roslan in fifth, Josh Downard in sixth, Sandeep Choda in seventh, Tommy Ucabra in eighth, Wesley Stefano ninth, Demir Vuk rounds off the points position in tenth, Kenneth Raglan eleventh, Eric Sanford manages to call back from a couple of accidents to get 12th. Michael Baldessara in Team Dushland, P13. Jack Mayer, P14. Celius Bantis, P15. Mark Turo, P16. And then we have the DNFs. Overall, not a bad race at Shanghai. Uh, tire strategy came down at the end. Exactly. Tires were the main thing, and... We'll have the driver's standings just after this quick break.
that was a pretty good race actually at Shanghai. I wasn't expecting, I'll be honest, coming into it, I was, Shanghai's never been a um, good circuit really for the racing, but actually had a lot of battles up and down in the field, didn't we, Jared? It wasn't too bad actually, yeah. Uh, battles all through the field. Uh, quite enjoyed it really. And, well, for the fir one of the first times ever, we're actually joined by two people that want to be interviewed. So, Jared, it's over to you. All right, All right so, so we'll start off. Uh, Jack, Jack Mayer, Mayer having, having a, a pretty okay, okay race, okay. finished nice up there. Yeah. Uh, your yeah, thoughts on the race? It was an all right all race. Right. Um... Like I said, I made a rocket start from 13th place on the grid. By the end of turn two, I was into ninth. Sadly, I had a bit of contact into turn three from a car behind. Forced me to pit on lap one. Uh, then I had to fight my way up the field. Had a few battles with Stelius and um, Baldero, Baldesra. But couldn't really salvage anything from that first collision. Just had to get my way home. Yeah. Notice the tyre strategy was very important today. How did you go with managing the tyres? Well, it was just like a matter of getting the tyres to last as long as you could and get as least stops as possible throughout the um, throughout the race distance. I mean, I wasn't really sure how long the prime tyres were going to last on heavy fuel or on uh, short fuel, so I decided to go with what I knew and just went on hard to start with and just finished on low fuel with the softer tyres. Yeah. yeah, it was a good race to watch. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can come back in the next race in Istanbul and be up in the points. Uh, thank you, Jack, for that. Thanks. Uh, Josh had a relatively great race for your rookie race. Uh, what was the what was the view from your point of view? Well, um, I, I'm really happy with my qualifying. Um, my fastest I'd, time I'd done at all, all weekend was a 35.7 until qualifying where I got 35.2. So I'd say that was, you know, I was very happy with that to get seventh place in my first race. And then um, I had a decent start. I don't think I made up any positions on the first lap. I was just sticking behind everyone, not wanting to damage my car. It's my first race, so I was worried about that. And then um, I had a battle throughout the whole first stint with uh, Vuk and I can't, remember, uh, I can't remember who else, but that was a scary... Application isn't running, nothing to scan. Yeah, we had a very, very good battle for the rookies. Uh, Obviously, I think it was 5th, 6th and 7th, or and 8th at the end, um, for the rookies. Did you did you enjoy that? But yeah, it was a very fun race. Um, battles pretty much throughout the whole thing. Uh, at the start of the last lap, I was 7th, and by the hairpin before the long straight, I was 5th. So, <laughs> very exciting last lap. Unfortunately, I lost a position to 6th. Um, at the hairpin, but very fun race. No, it was great to see. Well done. Thanks. And now we go on to the race winner, Andre Borotowski. You had a really great race, uh, obviously, pulling away from this uh, at the start. You managed to hold those tyres very well. How do you see the race from your point of view? Uh, actually, I was from the start a bit nervous, so... I was not 100% concentrate from the start. I was really nervous because Meno has really good pace behind me. Uh, I have seen that I have on the start a small contact with some car, but I do not register who it was. And then I was trying to only copy the strategy from Meno because I was only in the controlling position. So. It was not an easy win. It was a bit lucky win too. Because yeah, I think a... sorry, because I think that Choda will make me 
major problems in the race. I know his pace and I accept him as a big rival in the season. Yeah, we um obviously saw for your team one and three. Great result for the team, pulling in some points over both Tefor and Edonis Engineering. Is this good for the team? Yep, it is. Uh, our moral morale are raised up, so I can only say that we are pre preparing for the next race. Well, congratulations on the win, man. First win of the season for you and the team. We wish you best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Sandeep Choda. What a interesting race I see. Uh, not much luck, I'm afraid. How'd you go? Uh, my winning streak's over. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened first lap. I got hit from behind and had launched like oh, 40 feet in the air and surprised the tide and suspension didn't stay long, but probably lost about six or seven temps worth of lap time and extra tire wear, which uh, forced me to just stick with climbs all race. Yeah, it looked like a pretty tough race for you. Obviously, getting back into seventh position was was a good finish, obviously, from the start. You had a lot more pace, but a bit unfortunate. Uh, what about for your teammate, Menno Klont? Yeah, me too. Uh, I was hoping he'll... Well, the idea is if one of us is in trouble, then the other one will try and win the race. Uh, P2 is just probably exactly where we're probably going to be. I think we had the car anyway this weekend to win. Yeah, well, hopefully we can come back next next race and there'll be a three-way fight again between uh, the top three teams. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining us and we'll see how you go next race, eh? Thanks for that. Great interviews. It's nice to see people actually wanting to come and interview and tell us about their experience in that race. It's incredible. Because obviously, we're this side doing the broadcast and everything, and we don't get to know what it's properly like and everything. So it's great to hear it, what people want us like in the cockpit. And we can now actually go through the uh, championship standing. And it's Menoclon who has a very slender lead, one point over uh, Borowski in his ACR car. And then it's the second of the Adonis drivers and the reigning champion, Sadiq Choda, a further four points down, 31 points. While the second ACR driver, Lucas Viscos, fourth place with 23 points. So it's really quite tight at the top. It's about five points between separating first and third, and that is pretty good. It's going to be great for the next remaining 14 races, isn't it? It's looking like it's going to be a very tight battle for the championship. And, yeah, as you say, five points in the, for the top three. That, I don't think that's happened for quite a while here at Sim League. Exactly, and the constructors' title is quite is equally as tight. The battle is between Adonis and ACR. Adonis are on 67 points, ACR is on 63, so four points there as well. It's going to be really tight and it's going to be great to see the battling throughout the entire season. And obviously we move on to uh, Istanbul next in two weeks' time. Have you got any highlights of Istanbul? I remember last season FS2 was racing there. Uh, Stelius Francis took the win. Uh, with Theo coming very, very close behind. Hang I on. believe that was a... That's the only podium. Don't take that from me. I took the second place in FS2 oh, last year. Yeah. Oh, well there you go. It's my claim. I, I thought you got... It's my claim <laughs> to fame. But yeah, it's but yeah, great. It's... Go on. Oh, go on. Okay. Um, yeah. Good... Good track for racing, I think. It's probably one of my favourite races uh, as a driver's point of view. Obviously, we'll see how it's what it's like from the commentator's position. 
exactly. I, there's a, a lot of drivers don't seem to like it, but it's one of those tracks that I kind of gel with. So it'll be interesting to see who is able to gel with the track in two weeks' time. I hope that most of you guys will be able to join us then as well. So, I've been Quinton Payne, I've been joined alongside me by Jared Van Der Vade. Yep, uh, we're here from Shanghai, and thank you all for joining us. Goodbye. Ciao.